Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Recently, Tascam provided me a pre-release copy of the firmware version 1.4 for the Tascam model 12, which I've been testing for the past few days. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the three new features that have been added to version 1.4 and how they can help you and with your workflow. And if you've been on my YouTube channel, you know I have lots of videos on the Tascam Model 12, lots of tutorial, as well as some of the requests that I've been advocating that can be implemented in future firmware, which include this one. The three that I'm going to demonstrate are the ones that have actually been trying to get Tascam to implement, and they have. So thank you, Tascam, for listening to your customers and making sure that we are happy. So without any further delay, let's have a look at the three new features that have been added to the Tascam Model 12 firmware version 1.4. The first feature that I'm going to talk about and demonstrate is the USB return. Prior to version 1.4, when you are using the Tascam Model 12 with your PC, the return stereo signal went to channels 1 and 2. Now, this might have worked to some people without any problems, but majority of the people, this was a, an issue because you wanted to use your channel one and two to record your mics and having two channels just being wasted for the USB return was not really logical. And everybody, including myself, wanted this to happen maybe onto channel nine or seven, eight or onto the main. Well, with version 1.4, you have now the option to still select the default channel 1 and 2, if that's what you're used to, and that fits your workflow, that's all fine. Then you're now able to select the channels 9 and 10, or directly to the main. So you will have all your 10 channels available for your live input or multi-track input, then you'll have your PC return, stereo return, directly to the main. And of course, that will be controlled by the volume in your PC, whether it's Mac or uh, Windows, where if you send it to 9 and 10, then you have a single fader to control the stereo signal coming back, or again, the channel 1, channel 2 default, which is 1 and 2. To select the USB return, we go into the menu, then into system, you scroll down to system, and press jog, and then scroll down until you find USB audio, and you click, and here you can see it's a little bit different from version 1.4, where here you can select how you want the audio to be sent from the Model 12 to the PC, and you have two options for that one as previously, multi-input or the stereo mix, which is basically just the main bus. If you're using multi-track recording, then you select multi-input. If you are doing podcasting and you just want a stereo signal going to your PC for OBS, then you select stereo mix. And here is a new option available from the PC channel 1 and 2, which is a stereo signal. You'll go to default channel 1 and 2. You can also now select channel 9 and 10. So now you can use channel 9 and 10 as a one single stereo fader or directly to the main. Depending on your workflow, you can choose whichever one you like. I personally like to go to the main. That way, any audio being played on my PC, it will go to the main. And if I have my DAW open and I have assigned that to channels 9 and 10, then I'll have two audio signals working uh, at the same time without any issues. So I will have, let's say, um, my DAW doing a mixing. And while I'm listening to Spotify on my uh, PC, using you know web browser or even YouTube to reference uh, the music, then I can have them both at the same time and switching is a matter of just muting channel 9 and 10 and listening to the main. So it works really well. And that's my workflow. 
and for that it's really really great so that's one of the main sort of uh, workflow issues that i had prior to this version 1.4 update so that's a really great one the next new features that have been added for version 1.4 is channel gain boost. This could be a follow-up from my video when I demonstrated how the line input 7 and 8 and 9 and 10, the gain was so low that you had to turn the gain knob way up high to get any decent signal coming in. And doing so, it actually lost the stereo balance because of the, you know, the tolerance of the... Um, the, uh, the the knobs and if you haven't watched my video you can go and watch my video i'll try to leave a link for that so to resolve that tascam has added a digital gain um, in each of the channels so now you don't have to turn your analog gain all the way up as long as you got just enough signal and you're happy with that you can boost the channel signal to up to 12 db and this is for each individual channel, individual channels. So if you don't want any gain for any of the other channels, that's fine. You can leave them or turned off, um, but you can add gain for your line inputs. Or if you are using, let's say, the microphone, the Shure SM7B, and you need a little bit of extra gain because they are gain hungry, you can actually add extra digital gain to that channel for that microphone and you don't have to turn the gain knob all the way up to get enough signal coming through. So to get to that menu, we just go to the menu and we go to mixer. And now we should have gain boost at the bottom and we can select. And as you can see, you have gain boost option for all of the channels including 7, 8, and 9, and 10. At the moment, I have them all turned off, but um, you can turn them on. So I'm just going to go to my 7 and 8, which is my line input that I always use. I'm just going to click, and here we have three options, plus 6 dB and plus 12 dB. So in most cases, plus 6 dB, which is virtually doubling the input signal, is plenty for my use. And same with 9 and 10, because I get uh, synthesizers and keyboards connected, I'm going to boost that signal as well. But if you've got a microphone, let's say on channel 1 or channel 2, which is the SM7B, or any microphone that doesn't have enough signal, you can extend that to as well, or maybe even 12 dB, and see which one works best. And um, now, that's all good that uh, you've extended that. That's how you can do it. But I'm going to show you one other extra thing that you might be able to see. Um, is when you go into meters. Um, let me zoom in. Can you see how 2, 7 and 8, and as well as 9 and 10 are different shade to the other channels? And you can see an icon at the top saying gain plus. That means those, cha that means those channels have gain added to them so you can visually see if you've added any digital gain to those channels that's a very clever feedback and uh, thanks Tascam for doing that otherwise you might wonder why it's so loud um, on, on some of the inputs this will visually tell you that you actually applied a digital gain to them well i'm sure some of you will ask the question Will that digital gain be applied to the USB stand, multi-track, or to the multi-track recorder? Well, to answer you that question, I have done some testing. So here are the results. By default, that digital gain is only applying to the main mix, not what's being recorded onto the multi-track recorder or into your PC. However, if you want that digital gain to be apply so that you can record that louder signal onto your multi-track recorder or into your DAW, there is the possibility. That means you need to go and set your USB send point post compressor. So to do that, we just go into the mixer, USB send point, and here you need to select, instead of pre-comp, 
post comp. So that means the signal is instead of going before the compressor, it's after the compressor. Then you will get that digital gain printed in your DAW or on your multi track recorder. Now, if you are using compression, then of course that will apply as well. And if you don't want to use compression, you just want the digital gain, extra signal, then you can just turn the uh, uh, compressor off and that will make it work. Also, when you are playing back from your the multi-track recorder, let me just reset this back. Um, when you are playing back um, pre-recorded into your uh, uh, desk, so you can mix it down, that digital gain does not apply. It only applies when you are recording, um, either to um, multi-track uh, or into your PC, post compression. The next feature that has been added to version 1.4 is track normalize and basically that affects the multi-track recorder so that if you did have a track that's been recorded and the level is too low you can actually normalize it that means you can gain stage it or give it more gain or if you see that it's too loud and it's about to clip and you want to turn down you could do the other way around as well. So like in this example, let's say my uh, vocal track was uh, too low recorded and I have to turn the fader all the way up relative to the other faders and it's not a good balance. So I could actually go and normalize so that um, I bring up the volume so I don't have to push the fader as loud. Uh, and at the same time, let's say if my bass was recorded too hard, and my fader was all the way down here well the rest of the faders were all the way up there then obviously that's not a good balance for a mix and you can actually turn down using the normalize option so that the base level is a signal is lower and then you can have your fader where i would like it to be in this sort of area so how do we get access to normalize let me show you to access the normalize uh, function, we just go into menu and we scroll down to MTR, which is the multi-track recorder because it is multi-track recorder relevant. We click on there and then we go into track edit. We click and here we can select normalize at the bottom of the list. So we click normalize. Here we are allowed to select which of the tracks including interestingly enough the main which is um you know 11 and 12 which i will talk about in a minute and then let's say our uh, you know channel six which is the bass was um too too low so we can normalize it to you know i wouldn't go anywhere past minus 3 db that means it's just gonna bring the signal the peak signal down to minus 3 db even then to allow it, by default, I would say I would select minus 6 dB. So the peaks won't be any higher than minus 6 dB. So that's really great gain staging. Um, or, you know, you can even go down to minus 12 and it does go all the way down to minus 20. This way, if your signal is too hot for some reason and you just want it to be really quiet, minus 20 dB is a good option. But by just selecting each of the tracks and then going and saying, okay, minus uh, 12 dB, then all of your uh, tracks, if you choose to, can peak to minus 12 dB, and then you can use the faders to mix it down and you see which one you require to adjust it. So that's a really great feature. And of course, the lower you are, the more sort of uh, control you have, my finer control. So if you're adjusting anywhere between 0 dB to minus 6 dB, they increment by 0.1 dB. So it goes 4.8, 4.95. And once you reach 6 dB, it actually starts going 6.5, 7. So they're 0 0.5 dB increment until you reach 12 dB. Then it's dB increments. That way it makes it easier to go up and down. And when you are doing into a finer, um, sort of less headroom, then you've got finer control 
in the options. And once you're happy with that, we click yes, and it will process it and it will normalize it to whatever setting you had. And I should mention that this is not reversible to a certain degree. So there is no undo. But of course, you can always go back. Let's say if it was too loud, you can still go back and say, okay, I want actually to be minus 6 dB or minus 8 dB, and they will bring it down back again to that level. So you can always uh, reapply it and you can, you know, give it again up and down. So that's how that normalize works. Well, those are the three major features that have been added into version 1.4 alongside some improvements and bug fixes that Tascam has made. So if you have any comments, any questions, feel free to use the comment section below and I will try to answer them for you. And most likely in the future, I will make more uh, detailed videos of each of these features and how you can use them creatively. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Tascam for listening to their customers and making that as part of their philosophy as well. We do appreciate it because we love the product and we just want it to fit uh, into our workflow so that we can produce music faster, better, and enjoy it. So till next time, as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. See you guys.